Well, here we are. It's a windy day in the north of West Australia and it's no better day to finally give you guys the rig rundown of my beloved 2012 Prado 150 series. Let's get into it. Now, the question I get asked mostly, why did I get a Prado? Now, there's one reason, because I got an absolute bargain when I bought this thing. But since then, I have had absolutely zero regrets. And fun fact, I would actually buy a brand new Prado if I was to get another car. There's a couple of reasons why. They are extremely comfortable to drive and also the reliability. This thing gets serviced every 5,000 kilometers by the guys at Jack's Tires. And I've literally, had no issues with it. I put on about 6,000 kilometers since I left my hometown about three weeks ago and she's still in the best shape she's ever been and that is a major reason why I love my Prada. All right, so let's look at shoes. So these are the Federal Explorer RT tires. Now the reason I went for these is because they were a bargain at the time. So I actually only got four of them and I've got some random spare on the back. They're a 33 inch tire and I've actually gone the steely rim in a 17 inch. Now the reason because uh, the Prado comes stock with 18 inch rims and they look absolutely stupid. They're alloy, you can't let your tyres down to the right pressure. So this is why I chuck these cheap little steelies on and I've had no issue with them either. All right, I'll bring you guys up here on the roof. So I've actually got this uh, flat rack roof rack and I got this from my mate West Oz Prospector. If you haven't seen him, he's an awesome uh, WA local who goes around and prospects, looks for gold and stuff. Pretty cool channel, legend of a bloke. So there's a couple of reasons that I do love having this flat rack. Number one is for all your dirty stuff. So at the back there, I've got my Max tracks. When they're muddy and filthy, you don't want to chuck them into the Prado. Um, also, I've got my jerry cans. They're empty at the moment. And I've got uh, these swags and stuff just to get them out of the way. You don't want them in the car. It stinks. And I also do chuck my kayak up here sometimes. You don't want that in the car after it's wet and salty. So inside the car, I'm actually running these solar screens. So what they do is actually act as a bit of insulation. Now, these things stop the heat from getting in the car and they make a massive difference, especially for the direct heat. If you've got something sitting here like this Esky, it's actually cold to touch. Now the direct heat, perfect example. In Australia, I'm not sure about anywhere else, but our seatbelts get absolutely red hot. With these on, the seatbelt in the back doesn't get anywhere near as hot. It just gets warm compared to the ones at the front that will actually leave a brand on your chest. So uh, that's a perfect example. If you've got your fridge in the back, you really do not want that working overtime in Australian heat. Moving to the back. So this is my Wet Sacks waterproof storage bin bag. Now these are actually one of my products. Now I've been putting a lot of time and effort into this product and well, I'm very, very pleased with it so far. So they're available now online. If you want to get yours, they look the part. They're definitely strong and uh, I can guarantee, look at all that red dust. Now at the front end of my car, probably my least most favourite part and the reason is because I really don't like this stock bull bar simply for looks. It does the absolute trick and I've had zero issues with it. That's the only reason. But I'm running two 9 inch hardcore spotlights at the front which are very, very bright. Very satisfied with them and uh, that's about it. Got the custom Nomads plates right here. Actually, up the front end, I forgot. Now, comms, let's talk about communication. This thing has been, uh, well, it's proven a difference um, in traveling right up the north of WA. I've done a lot of traveling and up here with the road trains, they can be four long. Now, it's really important for both safety for you and for them that you have this. So you jump on channel 40, the trucking channel, and you can let them know when you're passing and you guys can talk the whole way throughout to make sure that nothing bad happens. This here is the Uniden, uh, what model is it? ATX 970. Uh, it's probably a bit tall for what I need it for. So I've been told that you probably want the short and stumpy one. Um, get in touch with the guys at Uniden if you want a bit more expertise on that. Let's come inside the cab, eh? Man, what a mess in this cockpit. So in the cockpit, I'm running a 12 inch Polaris screen. Now this thing can run Netflix. You can even draw pictures when it's turned off because it's so dusty and dirty. Um, you can run Netflix, you can, it's pretty much a tablet. You can run all the Google apps on there. Um, it's got HEMA maps, uh, it's got Netflix, it's got your Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android CarPlay, and uh, it's just so good. It can move around like this. So down here, obviously paired with the aerial up the front, I've got my Uniden handheld X76 handpiece here. That's really about it for my boring little cockpit. 
All right, so suspension. It's something that I have overlooked my whole life for driving, but I can tell you right now, this Petter suspension has truly been the best mod that I've done to any car that I've got. Now, Petter's put this thing in just before I left off. I got new brakes, new rotors, uh, a whole new front end pretty much, and it drives that much better. But the suspension in particular has been so good. The last five days I've spent over corrugation, ruts in some of the most remote places, and these foam cell shocks have just been unbelievable for both comfort and also the ride quality for the car. Now I did jump in my mate's car on the same track that we went down this and the difference in the corrugation is just unbelievable. All right, so obviously I did have a two inch lift in my car already. However, the reason that I did opt for the Petters is because I had heavier springs in the back which made the car sit like this a little bit. And the reason I did is because I towed a boat. Now, obviously I don't have the boat anymore and I'm probably not gonna have a boat that heavy for a little while, or I might. And if I do, there is a good little mod that I've done from Airbag Man Suspension that helps with that. So this car has two airbags up the back of the car. Now I can literally get a little remote, click the button, and the car will raise up the back. Now the importance for having that is I can actually run softer springs in the rear so it sits level, it's much comfier off-road, and then when I do have a boat or a heavy load in the back, shall I say, I can actually get the airbags, pump up the pressure, and then it will sit even and it will ride a lot smoother. It's a pretty impressive mod if you ask me. So hidden just in this little side panel inside the car is a uh, airbag man compressor. So obviously that pumps up the airbags, but what it can also do is pump up my tires. So it's got a little hand piece that you just plug into and uh, I can go around and pump up all my tires. Underneath the car, it's got this little compressed air cylinder that sits right at the back. So you've got air on tap, ready to roll, and um, it just makes that life off-road that little bit easier. In this side was well, just a heck of a mess at the moment. Um, but this thing, I thought I'd show you, it's an on-tap product. So pretty much it's very basic. It's just a 12 volt jerry can with a water pump inside. So you flick the switch, plug it into your cigarette socket, and uh, you've got water on tap, ready to go. I just used it previously just to wash off my uh, boots. I went for a little mud crab, and um, it's just really good to have there, especially if you're taking a lady on a trip and uh, she wants to go camping. She's got no excuse if there's no showers around because she can use this thing. So what's next? Um, I don't know. Whatever comes up next, I guess. Nah, so from doing this trip, I've been off-road um, for about three weeks now, or up north, should I say, traveling and living out of my car, and there's a couple of things that I do definitely wanna do next. So firstly, rooftop tent. I need to get myself out of the car. I've been swagging it. Just this last week, I've got my single mattress and chucked it down the side uh, in the back of my car. Everything just goes on top of it when I'm off-road. It's so messy, and um, it really is not the ideal way to live. Uh, second mod that I would probably do is drawers in the back. I just need some more organization. Everything is all over the shop. Uh, so I do want to keep my back seats and I'm lucky with the Prado, everything sort of folds dead flat in the back. So I want to, uh, yeah, get some sort of draw system. I want to get a 12 volt system as well. Sorry, I don't have a dual battery system in this. I've got a battery pack. Um, so yeah, I do want to get a dual battery system for the whole 12 volt shenanigans. Nothing too fancy. Um, I want to get a drawer system in the back just for organization and uh, I want to get a rooftop tent just so I can get off the ground out of that swag life for a little bit. And that's about it. If you guys enjoyed this video and uh, you want to help my channel grow, it would mean the world if you could hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I'm just going to keep exploring. Currently in the middle of nowhere, loving life, and uh, thought I'd give you guys a rig rundown. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Cheers, you legends.